What do you do with a bag of potatoes and a potato launcher? And what does this have to do with physics? Well, a potato and a launcher are going to show you how you can determine whether or not there is reliable evidence to support a theory you have about something. That comes in handy with physics and all science. It's called the scientific method. It's a methodical way to test a hypothesis based on data collection and controlled variables. Without it, we would not know that the Earth orbits around the Sun, or that nature changes through evolution, or that penicillin kills bacteria. We may not change the world with the next great scientific principle, but let's go for it anyway. Okay, my Physics in Motion crew is going to demonstrate how this works. Ready, guys? Nice launch. Now let's do some launching using the scientific method. First, we need to ask a question. Let's make our question this. Does the length of the barrel affect the distance that the potato travels? Next, let's make a hypothesis, or an educated guess. If I increase the length of the barrel, the potato will travel farther. In the scientific method, you can change only one thing at a time, so that you are sure what is causing the outcome. You call that change in an experiment the independent variable. In our case, it's the length of the barrel. The dependent variable changes in response to the changing independent variable. For us, that's the distance the potato travels. But I could launch potatoes all day long, and I would only have a rough estimate of what was happening if I just eyeballed how far they went. If I really want to nail down what the test shows, I have to record the data. And I do that in a table that looks like this. One column shows the length of the barrel, and the other shows how far the potato went. OK, ready? Here goes the first one, in a barrel measuring 0.305 meters. Nice landing. Now we're going to measure how far it went and time how long it was in the air. 51.8 meters. We're going to plug that into our table. And what was the time in the air? 3.47 seconds. Now, let's adjust our barrel that measures 0.457 meters and launch another potato. Another nice one. Measurement, 69.8 meters. And how long was that one in the air? 4.26 seconds. And now for our third length, our longest barrel, which is 0.601 meters. We think that this will make the potato go farthest, right? Where did we land? 124.8 meters and 7.32 seconds. So let's see what the table tells us. The longer barrel shot the potato the farthest. Even though our results may have turned out as expected, we now have evidence to support our hypothesis by using scientific method. Actually, we'd have to show that we could repeat the experiment and get the same results, since being able to replicate results is a core principle of science. But for our purposes, this test is enough. Now that we have this data in the table, let's graph it and see what else we learn. By graphing, we will see more about how the length of the different barrels affects the potato launch. Graphing the data lets us see relationships between our variables that we might not see if we only looked at a table. Graphs also help us make predictions of how the launcher will behave, as you'll see in a minute. Any good graph has to have a clear descriptive title. Let's call ours barrel length versus distance traveled by the potato. Those are our variables. The independent variable goes on the x-axis, and the dependent variable goes on the y-axis. So what goes on the x-axis? Our independent variable, the length of the barrel. And what goes on our y-axis? The dependent variable, or the distance traveled. When you do this, make sure the numbers are evenly spaced along the axis. Write out the variables, including units, in parentheses, like this. Now, plot your data points on the graph. Draw what we call a best fit line, the line that runs through the average of your points. What does this tell us? The graph supports our hypothesis that the longer the barrel, the farther the potato travels. We can pick a point that wasn't one of the data points we collected within our graph 
and see that when the barrel is 0.50 meters long, the potato should go 102.3 meters. This method of prediction is called interpolation, estimating a value within a set of data points. We can also trace our best fit line out beyond our data points and predict how far the potato will go. This is called extrapolation, estimating a value beyond a set of data points. Let's do another graph, this time with distance on the y and time on the x-axis. Then we can talk about slope, which tells us a lot about the relationship between our variables. You can find the slope of any line in the world, and here's how. As you learned in math class, a line has an equation, y equals mx plus b, where x and y are your coordinates, m is the slope of the line that runs through the average of your points on the graph, and b is your y-intercept, the point where your graph crosses the y-axis. To find the slope of the line, find two points on your line, and then find the difference in the y-values of these points, divided by the difference between the x-values of them, or y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Let's look at how long it took our potato to cover the distance it did. Distance in meters on the y-axis and time in seconds on the x-axis. If we find the slope on our potato graph by using the time it took to get to the distance it traveled, we will know the speed of our potatoes. By plugging values into the slope equation, we calculate the average speed of the potato as 10 meters per second. Okay, that's all our potato graphs can tell us, but it's not all that graphs in general can tell us. Let's look at some other kinds of graphs. This is an inversely proportional graph. Physicists use these graphs to compare pressure and volume of gases. When pressure increases, volume decreases. Or with Newton's law of universal gravitation, as the square of the distance between bodies increases, the force between them decreases, F is proportional to 1 divided by distance squared. It tells us that as one of our variables increases, the other decreases. This graph shows a rapid increase in the distance covered by a race car over time which has the form of a quadratic relationship. y is proportional to x squared. We have the displacement of the race car on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis. So we've collected potato launcher data and graphed it and also looked at other graphs that help you analyze data and test hypotheses, two very important factors when you're using the scientific method. Using facts and data is what has made many of the world's greatest inventions and discoveries possible. That's it for this segment of Physics in Motion. We will see you next time. For more practice problems, lab activities, and note-taking guides, check out the Physics in Motion Toolkit.